This show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for certain audiences. Listener discretion is strongly advised. A friendly reminder, Mary Jane edibles are not a substitute for actually paying your Lyft driver. Don't forget to tip your bartenders, you filthy fucking animals. And if you've got kinks, we've got links. Don't forget to subscribe, put on your seatbelt, and enjoy the ride. Howdy, 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 everybody, and welcome to Thespian Talk. It's been a while. Oh, has it been a while? It's been a while since we've done one of these. Um, <laughs> I am your host, Gomer Lorraine. been a long time. There you go. Get it from there to here. <laughs> I am your host, <laughs> Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and who you just heard is Michelle. Hello. And we also have Skola Pendra. Hello. And with us again is Ricky. Hey, hey. Yes. Uh, so, oh yeah, Ricky here, as if you haven't heard him on the show before, he is one of my patrons. I think he is currently my top patron at the moment. Um, and if you pledge a certain amount to my Patreon, you get to you get to invoke one once a month. You can come on here and you, you can be co-host. I don't know how it's going to be if I end up getting exponentially more, more people, but we'll see how they all fall out in uh, Certain level. Speaking of getting more patrons, uh, I want to give a shout out to our newest patron, Kitty Quinn, who is awesome. She is a she is a longtime friend of mine, friend of the show, and she is also one of the hosts of Channel KRT, which if which if you listen through the mid rolls, if you're not a if you're not a patron, then you'll hear that every week. So she is she is she is good people. Uh, go listen to Channel KRT. That that is also a very good show. Uh, I think this week they're doing a. I think the week we're recording this and putting this out, they have an episode out on the Emperor's New School, which, okay. <laughs> I, I had seen it, I had seen it advertised, but I never really got into it. The original movie, Emperor's New Groove, was great, though. I love that film. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, there there are a lot, there are, there have been a lot of big shit going on and a lot of stuff we need to get out there. But before we get that stuff out there, uh, Michelle, how have you been the past few weeks? Uh, not bad, mostly tired on main. Um, my hours <laughs> are kind of settling back into them. Uh, the, the reason I've sort of shied off of doing like Wednesdays and Tuesdays and stuff is because I think I mentioned before, Tuesdays I have to get up at like 10 past 4 in the morning and I'm lucky if I can get to bed by 11. Um, so I'm pretty much dead. And yeah. then unless I can get a nap on the Tuesday, I'm pretty much still floopy headed on the on the Wednesday. It takes me a good couple of days to recover. So this Tuesday, I did manage like a near three hour gap uh, nap because I had a. I think I mentioned it before. I've got a playlist of just like um, high roll mood video music stuff. Each yeah. one's about an hour long, and I I had that playing in the background as I was sort of setting out on the sofa. And so I know because it played three videos <laughs> of where it was in the video. So, oh, about three hours. Cool. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, otherwise good. Thank you. Lily, how about you? How have you been? Been doing all right. Uh, got my vaccine a couple of weeks ago. I mean, second second round. So, so I'm uh, fully vaccinated. So that's great. Yeah, I got I got my second shot last week, <coughs> uh, which is one of the main reasons things had to be delayed. <laughs> uh, because it's like I yeah. got my first. Yeah. I think one of my local friends just got her first. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like, yeah. And I'm trying to convince another one. Oh. Yeah, go, go get, go get the vaccinating, vaccinationing, and everything. And she's like, but I've had it. I shouldn't need it. No, you go get it. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like, oh. you... go ahead. Yes, Karen. Karen. Oh, you finish uh, your right note. Yeah, because even if even if you've had it and and all that, and you came out no worse for the wear. Relatively speaking, you can catch it again, and even if your antibodies could eventually fight it off, still spread it to somebody else. So, yeah, go, go get your vaccine. Um, so, uh, Jimmy Snow posted up this thing on on his on sometimes show. I uh, made a point of screen capping it. Uh, so, United States friends, uh, if you text your zip code to get vax or four three eight eight two nine. They should almost immediately send you back uh, three centers that you can go to that will have a vaccine that you can get yourself sorted out at. 
Yep. So that's get vax four three eight eight two nine uh United States um folks. I don't think it works in Canada or South America. It's just like the main yeah. US of A. The main US of still A. Ha- <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Like technically um, you you're arrogant by calling yourself America because America is a big old fucking continent that's got two big globby bits and lots of stuff in the middle. This is true. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a video on it recently. I was like, "Ah, oh, fascinating." Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I think it is United States only. Um, but yes, so there you go. Yeah. Neat. Uh, and Ricky, it's been a while since we've had you on. How have you been, man? I have been fine, Goma. I have also got my second vaccination, which uh, then led to me being off for one day at work because um, my joints all decided they were going to stiffen up as a result. So. Could not go in and do could not go in and do cleaning as a result. Yeah, I I think that would definitely be a detriment. <laughs> uh, I think. Keith, may yeah. I ask? Yes. Sorry, sorry, Goma. Oh, no, uh, you go ahead. May I ask, Ricky? Uh, how come you got yours before me? Because um, I don't. Well, I'm a, I'm a cleaner as well. But is it because you're in a school? It's because I. I I'm a... yeah. It's because I'm in a school, and because one of my uh, people I live with is is technically counted as shielding, so they wanted everybody oh, in the household. Oh, fair enough. No, no, that's fine. I was just curious because it's like because uh, basically the way it works in in the UK is we're doing it by age, so we started with the oldest and going down the youngest, except for certain key workers, not including police or um, PCSOs, which really upset my friend because you know frontline people should, regardless of what your job is, frontline people should get it. Yeah. Uh, as a priority, but yeah, we're basically doing it in age group unless you are a particularly um, vulnerable group. So that's why yeah. I was curious. I mean, I think even over here, our frontline workers got it first for the most part, unless you're super rich, yeah. in which case, well, <laughs> uh, but I have a feeling that's not just a simply American problem either. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Eat the rich. Oh, it oh. tastes like pork. <laughs> Some people like pork. Um, yes. But, but uh, yeah, speaking of eating the rich, there was, like, within, the, within just the past week, there was a <laughs> hacker that hacked into some pipeline that distributes gas over here on the east coast of America. And, and the funny thing is, people on TikTok heard about it, and they were spreading that information around. And then, like, three days later, the mainstream media got it around, got it spread around. <laughs> And the people started panic buying gas because that's how we deal with stress in America. And not just America. Well, fair. That's how humans in general <laughs> deal with stress, I guess. But yeah. yeah, just and of course driving up the price because yeah, I had to get gas yesterday. Just I just needed to eat gas. I was I had to run to Tallahassee, so mm-hmm. fill up before I go. And I looked up at the thing. That shit's over three dollars a gallon. I don't drive, and I don't know conversions, so I really... Ricky, would you know what that translates to? Uh, a lot. I'm not entirely sure the exact amount, but I do know that is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> don't know how it translates to meters, but... Or, or, or pounds, or euros, or anything yeah. else. It's, it's, it's well, bullshit for... convert a... the price and the volume, so it's like double maths. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, either way, it's... Is bullshit because <laughs> nothing that, pe- that 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 people require for mobility and going to and from work should cost that much. It, it just shouldn't. I don't care if it's gas. I don't care if it's bus tickets. It shouldn't be costing that much. Nope. And thankfully, ba- <coughs> thankfully, based on my experience, bus tickets. If you're just going like one way or something, that's not too awful bad. You know, yeah. and you can get like, and I know in probably most, if not all, cities that have a bus system, you can get like a monthly pass for like thirty to yeah. sixty bucks, depending on what city you're in. That's a little bit more reasonable, because that, you know, because I think in Joliet it's sixty bucks, and you can get, get like, oh. and Joliet is also their bus system is also connected to Chicago proper, so, so it's a big ass area. So sixty bucks, and you can ride the bus anywhere on any day. That month, every day if you need, to. and it actually will save you a bit more money than just buying a ticket every, every, you know, a couple of tickets every day. So, so that works out. But if you're just like like most of us who drive a car, 
you're going to need that gas. You're going to need that petrol. And, you know, $3 a gallon in a lot of cars have over 10, da 10, uh, 10 gallons worth of fuel capacity. Um, I think ours is like 14 or 15. So that gets pricey pretty quick just for one tank of gas. Yeah. And you have to fill that up at least twice, three times a month, depending on where you work. So that builds up a lot quicker than a, a bus ticket. I, I think I'm just making the argument for mass transit. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Which, I, I, I don't mind. I was actually, um, because you, uh, I, I, I assume it's the same in most places, certainly for the, um, um, Arriva bus company, that I was told by one of the drivers that, because you can get a daily, just a, a single return ticket, like, you know, go there, go back, or you yeah. can get like a travel ticket, which lets you go many times if you want. Yeah. I was actually told by a driver that if you doesn't, if your ticket doesn't get stamped or anything, um, you can as long as you give it like five ten minutes after you've got off the bus, like from your return journey, you can use that ticket again. <laughs> hmm. You just gotta be a bit canny with it. There you go. Oh, but but yeah. So my plan got hacked, and it's Ugh. by the time we started recording, it been fixed up and everything. Like you know, why don't we just send that hacker? Find that hacker. Don't don't jail him. Don't imprison him. Take uh -huh. them and say, hey, why don't you hack into the bank accounts of Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk? <laughs> am I advocating stealing from two of the richest in the world? Yes, I am. Because fuck them. Uh. They steal from everybody else all the damn time. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, Elon Musk himself was brought up on blood money from African diamond mines. Uh. So, yeah. Okay, that's not good, but is that his fault? That's not his fault, but what is his fault, however, is the fact that yeah. he takes ideas and sells them as his own. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's no. not Bill. Wasn't I feel like there was another inventor about a century or so ago that that we like to revere a little bit, who also similarly stole ideas. Um no. I know I mean, Bell did it. Huh? I know Bell did it. Edison kind of kind of sometimes. Yeah, because actually, uh, Nikolai Tesla um, didn't get all the credit he uh, he deserved until more recently. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Says, "Hey, white Americans gonna white America," <sighs> and that's not a good thing in this case. I've I've seen a, a, a bit about Tesla recently, and uh, some of it is you know people sort of took advantage of him. Others, he just didn't know how to self promote. He didn't know how to sort of get himself out there. So. It's it's not cool that he got taken advantage of, but um, from everything I've seen, he didn't always help himself either. Yeah, he just wanted to get on with it and not worry about like bigging himself up all the time. Yeah. Speaking of Tesla, the thing that's currently trending on Twitter is don't buy Tesla. <laughs> like most of us, not most of us, are not really doing anything. Most of us probably can't afford one. No. <laughs> uh. Just... And, if um, I was going to get an EV, it wouldn't be a Tesla just because uh, who can who can afford? Well, I, I, the thing is, my at, at this point now, um, because I already can't drive. In order for me to get a driver's license, I'd already be like lit. I'd, I'd have one my numbers would come up. So, yeah, I could probably afford a Tesla if I've got that kind of money. Where I could just take a, a, a course and just do it. But there you go. At the same time, I, I'd want to get a more utility, you know, a practical, more practical vehicle than than a Tesla anyway. I wouldn't want this necessarily a sports car. I want something I could put my shopping in. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's just me again as a non-driver. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord oh. be. The other things that are going on, we've got the GOP over here falling rank and file behind Trump. Even though oh. Trump has no power anymore, they want him to have power. You've got everybody be like, well, Trump really won the election. Blah, blah, blah. No, he didn't. Oh. That is demonstrably untrue. He is out of office. Biden is in office, for better or for worse. And I have some criticisms about Biden, too. You know, yeah. they're not nearly as severe. Well, maybe maybe not nearly as severe pushing it, but definitely not with the same vitriol as I would have for Trump. Because... Biden, as far as I know, is not about to lead an insurrection. 
Biden, as far as I know, is not going to be a national traitor. He's not going to kiss Putin's ass. He's not going to kiss Kim Jong, was it Un, I think, still? Un, uh, yeah. 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 He's not going to kiss his ass. So, you know, he's not going to be all buddy-buddy and chummy-chummy with known horrific dictators. All right. So, yeah. And he's reversing Trump-era policies. You know, like trans people, I think they, you know, no more, no more trans military ban. That we know for sure. And he's starting to try to do something at the border. He needs yep. to do more, but he's at least starting to try. You know? And then, and then the whole workforce, the whole workforce thing is happening right now. Basically, for those who don't know, there there are businesses out there that are finding it hard to hire people, and it's not for a lack of workforce because there's plenty of people out here that are willing to work. The problem is, well, the problem for them rather is, we are not willing to work for slave wages anymore. Because uh -huh. inflation has gotten to the point to where seven dollars an hour, eight dollars an hour, even ten dollars an hour, that's basically slave wages at this point. If you want to keep up with inflation, the the hourly pay needs to be up in the thirties. So, and and I at one point I think I was thinking it was like twenty five or something. Apparently, it's in the thirties if you want to be really really good about it. But, yeah, you know. And you see people all the time, well, then your Big Mac will go up to $2, $3, $15. Oh, fuck off. No, it won't. No, no, it won't. Not not if, especially not if you have a government enforcing, hey, you price gouge this, we are going to find your ass so far into oblivion, you will go out of business. Do you understand me, McDonald's? Do you understand me, Walmart? So, I mean, hell, speaking of McDonald's, don't they do that? I want to say, was that like, what, Denmark or something? Or McDonald's has to pay? I like, like that. Pay like no, 20... Australia does. Yeah. Yeah, play, you know, those countries, they have the higher wages. And from what I understand, the Big Mac is still around the same price. Still readily affordable. And even, okay, and let, uh, let's even, I'll be generous. Let's take this whole idea that Big Macs will go up to $15 an hour. They won't, but we'll, we'll, we'll say that for the sake of argument. Because people are being paid more, they can afford more. Yeah. They can still yeah. afford that Big Mac. Now, granted, it would still be hellacious price gouging and proof that companies only care about money and not about their customer base. They definitely don't care about their employees, by and large. I know there are some exceptions. So, you know, and again, they do that even in this country. They would be fine to hell and back with, you know, again, they would probably bankrupt McDonald's. If they did their job right. Which. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned the GOP smiling behind Donald Trump. And and just recently, just this week, uh, Liz Cheney. Was it Liz Cheney? Which is one of the things I wanted to bring up. Yeah, Liz yeah. Cheney. Uh, yeah. She basically got booted out. And she's like, uh, fuck you, I'm going to stop my own party. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I mean, I don't know much about her politics or anything like that, but she seems like a woman of uh, at least someone who's willing to stand by her principles. So, yeah. yeah. Even if her principles are not very good for the long run, because <laughs> while Trump was in office, she was right behind him. But now uh, that he's gone, she's like, you know what? Hey, we lost. Let's lick our wounds and regroup. That sort so, of thing. The thing specifically I wanted to cover regarding this is mm -hmm. she said we're going to start our own party. Now, the way it works here is if you have, if, like, you transfer parties or you have a breakaway party, like, the example I know of is there are a couple of conservatives that joined UKIP, which is how UKIP technically have, have had elected MPs, but they were defectors. So ah. you still. You still stay in office. You still say your elected person, like for your constituency, until your next next time your seat's up. But you know your party affiliation changes. And I don't know if it works the same way over there, but assuming similar, <coughs> does that mean then that technically, yeah, it'd still be like a fifty-fifty in the um, Senate, but the people that decide uh, to go group go team Cheney. Are going to be more or less likely to to vote with the um, 
Democrats are like, let's say a person who is mostly Republican happens to agree with the Demo- the, the, the current Democratic bill, but would have voted against it because A, party lines and B, well, because I, I might lose my seat. But if they're actually like, you know what? I'm not in that big party anymore. I'm with the smaller party. I think this is a good idea. And more importantly, my constituents think it's a good idea. So yeah, I'm going to then cross the aisle. I'm going to, I'm going to vote, you know, with my conscience rather than with, you know, the team, you know, fear out of like, losing my seat or whatever. Yeah. I know it's a kind of a broad question. Could, could you, could you answer? But that is, is that something you could potentially see is happening? It's like, hey, if, they, if we make a third party, then we don't necessarily have to follow the main GOP lines. Also, a small maybe... correction: uh, uh, Liz Cheney is in the House, not the Senate. No, I was using the Senate as a, an example because okay. I know that's fifty-fifty. The House is a bit more spread okay. out, isn't it? Okay, I I, I guess it's getting read for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it could be in the way I babbled it out, but no, just saying like, <sighs> okay, so she's in. Um... Okay, but. All right, so she wants to start her own party, but there's no reason that people, regardless of whether they're in the um, upper or lower chambers or whatever, I keep getting the proper terminology. But basically, anyone wants to join Team Cheney, doesn't matter which house they're, they're currently sitting in. If they do that, then they can still vote with their conscience or whatever. That I don't think I'm explaining it very well, but the idea is basically because you've joined the third party anyway, uh, screw the party lines, vote with your conscience, and maybe actually get shit done. Um, I would like to think so theoretically, but I wouldn't <laughs> couldn't say for sure. Yeah, I would still have the problem. That they they would still have donors. Ugh. Yeah, because we gotta has our monies in everything, and it's like <sighs> need your money. Trust me. And and guess what? If if the politicians start tightening their belts and stop taking money from rich people who want to basically gain genie the entire system, then they can live okay. Live comfortably enough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God! And I also noticed this. This is this is very troubling and very concerning. I, uh, um, it's all right. So, um, another thing that is trending on the twitters is American Jews. Oh, now, well, that the fact that there are Americans, oh. the, the the fact that Jews live in America is not concerning because I. I, my, one of my good friends is Jewish, and yeah, like yeah, no, <laughs> not a problem at all. That's not the problem. The problem is this Newsmax host, who says of and course. is quoted here saying, "If you're Jewish and you're a Democrat and you're living in America today, how do you support an administration that turns its back on your home country?" Um, <sighs> and 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 to clarify, they're referring to home country as Israel. Because yeah. Israel is still trying to do a genocide against the Palestinians because well, we, we, what is it? Me, 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 me. Palestinians are like, no, we live here. Fuck off. You know, it, it's it's very white thing to do if you think about it. Even though as far as I know, Israel is full of very much non-white people. You're not supposed to learn from us, assholes. You're supposed to say, you're supposed to look at the white devils and say, hey, um, Let's not be that way. I I don't know how that comes off, but I'm going to stick by it at least for the moment. Because it's the point is it's fucking wrong. And the fact that this guy, this this Newsmax host dude, um uh Grant Dinchfield, I think is his name. Yeah. That's how you pronounce it. Is the one who is saying, "Well, if you're Jewish, you do it's like no. No. Here's here's the thing. Here's the thing, mm-hmm. and I've seen a lot of Jewish people, both it, both personally and just on the social medias, speaking out against Israel genociding Palestine. Yeah. And it's yep. just, yeah, that's how they feel. That's literally how they feel. Well, it's Israel. Is it anti semitic No, it is not, because Israel is a country, not a people. Yep. It would be like, say, it, it would be like, it would be like me being over in England... And spouting shit about any part of the American government. Well, aren't you anti-American? No. Or 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 something similar. It's hard to find a good frame of reference. Yeah. Reference. But still. And oh, somebody else. And and I found this one 
on on my Twitters as well. Let me pull it up real quick while I'm thinking about it. Cuz this this person, uh let's see. Um there's an no putting gas, no. Oh. Among other things that is happening. Uh we all have heard of the quartering, right? I don't know. Yeah. How, I don't. I don't, I don't yes. know how often I bring them up on here, and hopefully I haven't done it too often. But I'm doing it now because so many people, so many of these alt right grifters, are just either dropping the mask completely, or they are just like, "Oh, that's where the money is, so let's go with Nazism." Now I mentioned earlier that Biden is trying to do things in terms of the border, um, mm-hmm. and one of those things was the. Biden administration administration to prioritize transgender migrants seeking to cross the U.S. border, which okay, yeah, because odds are they're going to need the, the extra help and they're going to need hormones and everything else. Uh, Biden administration ex- is expanding their priorities to include families with young children and people who identify as transgender, and this is you know just for border crossing because it's like hey people want to come over here and all that good shit. Now, I'm going to put on a voice filter because I do not want to hold a, a fucking voice this whole time. Um, I'm going to go with... I'm actually going to go with this one because it, it's labeled Evil Deep. Because <laughs> at this point, the quarter is evil. <laughs> and cannot convince me otherwise. I don't care if yeah. he saves a burning orphanage, he is still evil. Here we go. <laughs> Putting the quartering here. <laughs> oh fucking course. You know what? Shut the fucking border down. Send the National Guard down there with and build a human wall. Hundreds of thousands are crossing a month. Legendary inflation, unemployment, new job number tanking. We literally cannot take on any more. Oh, you've got fucking loads of space. Shut up. Yeah, just just we we have the space, and yeah, hey, guess what? If you know, you know the the whole idea of oh they took our jobs thing. No, migrants are not taking our jobs. They're not coming in here and saying hey you cannot work this. I've got to work this because I'm an immigrant. Nobody's doing that. If mm-hmm. immigrants are supposedly taking our jobs, it's because the corporations. Are giving it to them, and they're and they're paying them worse than slave wages, because they don't know better, and because, you know, a lot of them come over here, you know, under the table or illegally, if you want to put it that way, you know, mm-hmm. you know. So these corporations, hi Walmart, take advantage <laughs> of it, <coughs> and they say, well, well, we won't report you, but you got to work for us for these wages, and the wages are insultingly low. Insultingly yeah. low. So, yep. oh, it's it's not it's not them. But there's more. Old Jeremy the quartering has more. Joe Biden's presidency is pushing me further right than I am comfortable being, and it's been like four months. <laughs> this dude is so fucking inept. I am seriously worried about this country even surviving his presidency. The only candidate oh. that will ever earn my vote. In the future, we'll have to have a long history of being America first. Give me a libertarian that is America only, and I'll fucking phone bank for the person. I'll ring doorbells. I'll donate cash. Where is this candidate? Candidate is up your ass, Jeremy. Why would you want a libertarian? Right? Like, libertarian, from what I've been, from what's been demonstrated to me by the majority of libertarian that I've, that I have noticed, and bear in mind, I'm not making note. It is the majority of them. There are, I think, there's one who follows me who identifies as libertarian, and they seem like good people in the long run. So, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Hashtag not all libertarians. Duh. Which should go without <laughs> saying, but uh-huh. many, many people. Um, but the whole idea behind libertarianism is every person for themselves. Fuck the man. Which, okay, I agree with fuck the man, but don't fuck him so completely that nobody has a safety net. That's kind of what a government is there for, to help keep things running. 
and they're put there by us. We're like, okay, we are hiring you to help keep things running smoothly. And if you can't do that, we have to get rid of you. That's how it should so, be. So, I, yep. I think you mentioned before, once before, ages ago, about the town that was like pure libertarian that got taken over by bears. There was a <laughs> second town. There, no, there's actually two towns that go try to go uh, pure libertarian. The second one, I, the second one I heard about, I think it was technically the first try it, but the second one I heard about, um, they didn't get invaded by bears, but they still had the problem where they forgot about me, uh, you know, trash collection and, and stuff like you just hear every day running the city and keeping shit going stuff because they were hey they were just doing their own thing and yeah so i think there's two different si town cities that i'm aware of both of which basically failed and i'm pretty sure they both have books so have the reading if you're interested yeah fucking hell people <laughs> the, the, that's the whole thing about humans in the societies that we try and build and maintain is that we all work together. And yeah, there are uh -huh. some of us that are probably going to be more secluded than others. That's fine, you know. You don't you don't have to we don't have to go out and powwow and dance in the in the town square every day. We don't have to do that. You know, especially not right now. There's no, that's at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Right. That's you know, that's that's just a thing that we don't always have to do, especially with the pandemic still running around. By the way, get your ass vaccinated. Now, we mentioned it before, but we're going to mention it again because it's that goddamn important. But in some way, we all contribute something. If, if, even if it's not money, then at the very least camaraderie, uh, you know, maybe a shoulder to cry on. Things that some people maybe don't necessarily think about. You know? I mean, hell, we, we've contributed with the arts. You know, movies, videos, fucking just theater. Fine art and regular art and doesn't matter what kind of art you have, you know, that helps contribute to society to keep us all from going bug fuck insane. <laughs> to put put new ideas out there. <laughs> to, and especially to do things like call out the people in power who are abusing said power. Which, you know, it makes now it now now some people are probably clicking, Oh, that's why the Republicans under Trump wanted to cut funding to the arts. Exactly. Yep. Because they don't, because Carlin, he keeps being proven right long after his own death. They don't want people, they do not want people that are capable of critical thought. They want obedient workers. And we need mm -hmm. to stand up, and, and this is me building on from that at this point. We need to stand up against that and say, no, fuck you. We are humans. We are, we, we deserve better than what we have. And we will kick your ass for it if it comes to it. We would rather it be peaceful. And fair enough, we should. It should be peaceful. But if push comes to shove, you shove the fuck back. Uh -huh. and, and it's getting to the point to where, and you're already seeing it, like like with the uh, Black Lives Matter protests, while the protesters themselves are not being, you know, like, they're, they're, they're not initially violent. As in, like, they're not instigating. I think that's the word I'm wanting. You know? Yeah. You know? You got the pigs coming in there who are so offended that how dare they protest against our cushy position in pe in society <laughs> and and all that bullshit that they just have to throw a punch they have to throw punches they have to throw throw smoke grenades shoot people blow shit up you know make make the peaceful protesters look bad to the point to where now the peaceful protesters don't have much of a choice they have to fight back otherwise they could get killed Mm -hmm. So, you know. And you know what I say to that? I say, good. Fight, you know, not to them getting killed, just the people fighting back against the pigs. You know? Yeah. Don't want anybody to die. Yeah. Just, just say, hey, pigs, you can't take, you, you can't do this anymore. And we're going to fuck you up now. And if you don't like it, tough. Should have thought of that before fucking us all up for generations. So, you know, that, that sort of thing there. And somebody, and I know people, people out there are like, well, what about the businesses, the small businesses? That's why we have insurance. And if there's a small business that was caught in the crossfire, that didn't need to be caught in the crossfire, you know, they're, they're you know, they're generally good people, good business, then the community will come, will gather up around them, most likely, and they'll say, hey, 
we're sorry. This, you know, we'll we'll help you rebuild. You know, but but you know, even even the CEOs of Target, at least I think it was the CEO of Target, understand that people matter more than property. Now, if they understood that even better, maybe pay their workers better. I don't know how much a Target paycheck is, but you know. But if they understood that even better, then maybe CEOs of Target would pay their pay more of their taxes. Just mm -hmm. maybe, uh, you know. But you know what? Baby steps. Baby steps. They're they're at least at the point where like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. We can rebuild the store. That's not a problem. It's it's the community around here, the the the, the fucking cops in the community around here that are mistreating and executing black people for simply being black or for doing something that's just a hair out of place. So, yeah, baby steps, we'll get there. We need to do more than baby steps overall. Ugh. It's a thing. It's a thing. Uh. I was just going back to some uh, idiot said before, me and the quartering. Uh, the reason your job market's tanking uh. over there is, is because Daddy Trump completely and utterly fucked up the, the response to the COVID. Yep. So, ba so basically, a whole bunch of, co of small businesses that supposedly the libertarians and right wing care about went belly up. Yep. That they did. That is true. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like you said, it is Trump's fault on that one. Because, because and, you know, he gutted everything like within like what the first few years oh. he was in office? Like, everything oh, yeah. that Obama put in place or anything, it's like, oh, I don't need this, don't need this, don't need this, don't need this. Oh, shit, a pandemic. Well, um, uh, inject bleach. No! <sighs> you first. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Go for it, Donnie. Inject that bleach. And I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if it, what anybody says. It's like, you know, you know, go fucking do it. Go fucking do it, you coward. And now somebody's going to be like, oh, you threatened? Are you, are you saying he should commit suicide? No, I'm saying he should inject bleach. I don't necessarily want to commit suicide. But granted, we all any good thinking person would know what happens if you inject bleach directly into your body. But you know. But no, seriously, if and if you're listening to this, don't inject bleach. No, unless you're Donald please Trump. Please don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. 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 Oh, uh, the but... other thing I was going to say as well. The other thing I was going to quickly say as well is. Um, the other reason you've got such a bad economy is actually because of Trump's America first process, because, no, it's not brilliant, but we do have globalization now. We've got to deal with it. We can't stuff it back in the, the genie back in the bottle. That is out there. All we can do now is try to work out a way we can actually make this system work for everybody. So yeah. unfortunately, no, you can't do isolationist anymore, America or Britain or anywhere else like that. Yeah, Boris. We're all connected now. Dave. End of story. Yeah. Trust me. If 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 people wanted to be as isolated as Trump and Boris want to be, yeah, bye bye anime, for one. Bye bye the majority of your video games. You know, bye bye bananas. Bye bye a lot of the stuff we fucking import over here. Bye bye baby baby bye bye. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. You know, there would be a lot of shit that just would not happen. So, you know, think think before think before you try and go for this whole. Oh, we need to be isolationist. Uh, really? Think about all the shit we import. Hell, the technology we're using to record this show, the the the, the, the <laughs> like the physical equipment. I'm pretty sure it was not all made in America. Yeah. Pretty sure some of it was made in China, some in Japan, some maybe in Mexico or Canada. We don't know. I, I, I... don't really care to look. <laughs> so, you know, we outsource a lot of shit, and then we import. That's that's how it works. So, you know, and like I said, like I, like I said, Biden is at least trying to undo some of that, a good chunk of that. But with our local economy, he really needs to work on it because one of the things that I think he either floated or tried to pass or something was the whole idea of trying to get rid of the unemployment benefits for, for, pe for people. You know, unless you, unless you like, um, basically you have to take a job that is, uh, 
oh, I'm trying to think of the wording for it. Um, basically, if you're offered a job and you're physically able to do it or go in for that interview or whatever, then you should take it or at least have the interview. Otherwise, you lose your unemployment benefits. Never mind the fact that, you know, said jobs, again, we, we mentioned it earlier, slave wages at this point, basically. So, like, no. And there are businesses think... out there right now that are offering, like, free shit for an interview. Mm. Which is like I think we've had like similar, um, not the freebies, but you know if you're if you're signing on, you've got to like look for so many jobs, and you get the interview. You have to go to the interview. But then again, we also have minimum wage, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know normal under normal circumstances, or at least this is how it was in Indiana. Um, you're on an unemployment there. You have to say, hey, I went and tried these three places, two or three places every week and then you would get your next little bit for it um yeah which whether yeah, you got an interview like, yeah. or not so yeah that was fun it didn't help that most of the places i could have went for an interview you know never called me back um doesn't matter that some of the places i could i went to for interviews were out in the goddamn you know parts of the city that the buses <laughs> barely could get to so yeah, never mind all that. Uh, and that's and that's yeah. not even getting into like physical problems that I and others like me may have. See, I while I can stand around, I can walk around just fine for like some periods of time. I have a collapsing arch on my left in my left foot. So if I'm on my feet for too long, and sometimes it's a few minutes, sometimes it's a little while, it always depends. But if I'm on my feet for too long. My left leg starts feeling like it goes to sleep. And it'll spread to my right leg if I leave it unchecked for too long. So being on my feet for two, four, six, eight hours at a time, flipping burgers, frying the fries, whatever. No. Physically, no. You know, running a cash register. Unless you give me a chair, that ain't happening. That's just not going to happen. You know. And, and... And people who know my history are like, oh, you, you, why don't you get back into driving? Well, number one, it leaves me with no time to do this bullshit here. <laughs> so that's number one. Number two, it was reaching a point to where it was starting to affect me mentally. So I was like, okay, dip it in the bud, get out now. And so I did. Uh -huh. um, and I think the only way I could get back in is if I raised a shit ton of money and just got my own truck, got my own authority, that sort of thing, and picked to pick and choose my shit and all of that shit instead of being set, told hey you need to be here by this time and be over there by that time and oh yeah you're going to have to drive overnight this time because we can't schedule you worth okay that only <laughs> happened once but still uh, yeah yeah the and and what I'm talking about with myself in terms of being able to have a job that would that could work for me extend that out to anybody else who needs work but needs more money in order to be able to make ends meet, who needs a job that's willing to accommodate them for whatever physical or mental ailments they may or may not have, well, mostly may have at this point, um, you know, and, and everything in between. It's just what when, what would work for me would also most likely work for everybody else. Ah, uh, but, all right, so if... if uh, so Scully, the the other three of us have been kind of going off and on on this on, on just everything. Do uh, you have any <laughs> thoughts you wish to share? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I mean, I uh, pretty much covered most of it, but I wanted to touch on the whole fucking Elon Musk thing. You know how he appeared on SNL and he was really unfunny and shit, and he said something like, "Oh, I'm the first person to first person with autism to host SNL." No, you're not. Dan Aykroyd ring a bell. Yeah. No. I'll admit, I didn't know it, that until ooh, this all dropped, and I don't pay attention to SNL. Not yeah. to defend Elon too much, but some people just point out the fact that, yes, Dan Aykroyd um, is on the spectrum. However, he wasn't open about it whilst he was um, either regular or um, guest hosting on SNL. So technically, because Elon did sort of clarify it, as like, or at least the first one is open about it. So technically not wrong, 
because of when we found out of, about each of their autism. Uh, yeah. Or found out when each of them was autistic, sorry. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of six of one, and I think in that situation. Yeah. Right. That's still Elon Musk. Fuck him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Wario okay, deserved better, damn it. I didn't yeah. even know what a sketch was. I've just seen the frames of it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I mean, I know Wario is meant to be a greedy bastard and everything, but he's better than Elon Musk. Come on. <laughs> oh. There's a humor at least. Yeah. Oi. <laughs> Oh. So yeah, any any anything else you want to add, Scully, before we go ahead and take our break? No, I think I'm good. <laughs> Alrighty. So when we come back, we'll have more. And speaking of things Scully brought up, he brought put a few tweets in our in our little green room here that we're gonna look at. And oh dear, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> no shit, uh, because fresh reactions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, and uh, we'll call then. So uh, stick around. Hey folks, we'll get back to the show in a moment, but first I want to tell you about Patreon. Uh, Patreon is what I use to get around all of the YouTube ad adpocalypse bullshit, and while I don't have a lot right now, every little bit does help, and if you like what you hear or what you see on any of my videos or podcasts, head on over there for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all of these things early before anybody else does, and you can get them completely ad-free. Yeah, I know YouTube right now is technically ad-free, but... At some point, I'm probably going to get big enough to where ads will start coming in. And those can be annoying, so you want to avoid that, right? If you go ahead and go now over to patreon.com slash gomer 21 double x leave a dollar, five dollars, doesn't matter how much, you can get all of these, again, you can get them early, and you get them without ads. Even when I reach the point on YouTube to where ads can be put on these videos. So, it's a win-win. And you can even avoid the ads that go up on the Anchor versions that go out to all of the other websites that are out there. No ads. It's great. Uh, so that's patreon.com slash gomer 21 double x And now, an important message from Tyler Green, Kitty Quinn, and Randy Martin. Are you tired of asking yourself if that obscure show or movie you watched once was a fever dream? Is it still in your brain to this day as a 3 a.m. channel-changing hallucination? Well, join us as we yank that said memory out of your subconscious when we do a deep dive on it on Channel KRT. Channel KRT is a new bi-weekly podcast where we look at the best and worst of obscure media. We'll be covering such topics as... The Puzzle Place. Clown TV. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV show. Reanimated. The Weird Al Show. We Sing. And, and more! more. Join us every other week over at Spotify, YouTube, Anchor, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Channel KRT cuts to static. Hey y'all, want to watch some anime? I haven't seen this one. Oh, good idea. I've been meaning to watch this one. Hey, can we watch this one? I was, uh, distracted. Ignoring how easily Gomer is distracted by booty, how about this one? Alright, alright, how about this? Let's just pick one and watch one episode a week. We can even talk about it on a podcast. It's random, it's anime, what should we call it? Randomay. Check out Randomay. Recorded every week at twitchtv.com backslash Rose and Thorn. Twitchtv.com. And available. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord. This I is all died. staying in. And we are back from our break. And, um, yeah, so, Michelle, you mentioned during the break you wanted to bring up something that we forgot to bring up in the first half, I think. As we didn't forget, it's just uh, a couple of things I want, wanted to talk about. Well, one I wanted to talk about uh, last time, another one is kind of semi-more recently. Uh, so, the first one, and um, obviously Ricky's going to have opinions on this, uh, I wanted to talk about Prince Philip a little bit, but not specifically about him. Um, I okay. I don't consider myself a royalist, right. but 
anyone who gets that close to hitting 100 and then dies about a month beforehand, fuck that shit. They deserve an extra power pack. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I agree. <laughs> I can <Yes>. see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but beyond that, um, one of our friends posted something in um, in one of the other groups. I'm not going to name the friend because uh, I, I've said, look, I'm not entirely happy. I don't necessarily approve what you posted, but I know it's you were just sharing it. So we co- we cool. I'm not going to name them, but we cool. Yeah. Uh, but basically, it was a tweet by someone who apparently is is a British person, a bit bit edgy, um, saying. That if you were sadder about Prince Philip, more fa- more sad about Prince Philip than you were about was it DMX, the, the rapper that died the same day, uh, then you're basically the police. And wow. I'm like, what? I'm like, technically, I was sadder about Phil. One because of what like I said before, if you get that close to a century, that's just not fair. Yeah. But also, I know who he is. I actually. Again, I'm not a royalist, but I kind of give a damn. Like people just see the headlines about him being a complete, you know, he said this and did this, and oh, what another gap, gap. But he was still one. He still was the hardest working royal going. He was still one of the most popular, most in demand. The guy wasn't a total arsehole all the freaking time. And yeah. you know, think about it. He's a he's a he's a husband. He's a father. He's a brother. He's an uncle. He's a grandfather. He's a great grandfather. Great great grandfather. How many lines down? He is a man with a long history. And that is something worth being a little bit sad about. Now, I'm not saying I was hugely sad. Like, when Diana died, I fucking cried buckets. Right. Mostly because of the shock and everything. I was I was a lot younger at the time. Yeah. But, objectively, I was sat more sad about Prince Philip's death, A, because of all the above, and B, because I just don't give a shit about DMX. I never listened to his music. I didn't, you know, generally speaking, not a fan of rap. Yeah. And all this other stuff. It's like... I couldn't even name one song. Maybe, maybe I don't know one of one of their songs. And I'm like, oh, okay, that song. Fair enough. That's that's okay. That's a, that is a bit of a bop. Yeah. And okay, I, I moved. So it was that, but it was also the kind of the case. And this is the part that Scully and I were talking about the other week. They're essentially gatekeeping grief. This because a couple of people in the threads were like, but what if I didn't care for either? What if I was fairly neutral? What if I felt a little bit sad but then moved on? And they were like, I'll oh, move along, officer. Like telling people what they should wow. be doing or how they should be feeling. Like, Don't great great grief. This is essentially what you're doing. Yeah, that that is a bit bullshit there. Like, you know even you know, even even with Prince Philip and, and all all the shit that he pulled in his life, good and mm-hmm. bad, of course people accentuate on the negative because of course we do. Because the negative was yeah, negative, let's let's face it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. you know, there are people who are going to be mourning, and that's fine, you know, but mm-hmm. that doesn't make them any more wrong, especially if they're like, if it's like genuine, like, <sighs> like I'm not gonna, I'm not going to knock Queen Elizabeth, basically, no, uh, for for one example, but neither, yeah, but but neither she not <clears throat> anybody who doesn't really didn't really know who DMX was, either. Mm. I mean, it's like you can understand the cultural impacts because I didn't really mourn for either of them. And yeah, that's fine. It's mostly because I didn't really know them. I mean, Prince Philip, I knew by reputation, and and there was uh, what well, what the fuck his name is, uh, Australian comedian uh, Lewis something. Yeah, yeah. He was he was doing um, a set right right as the news dropped about Prince Philip. And that was kind of amazing, but he went on too long. Eh. I thought it was alright, should... but. <laughs> After after a point, I was like, yeah, no. I mean, I guess he went back to his original set. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is what I was going to say anyway, so now I'm going to say it. It's like, yeah, it, it kind of went a little bit around the corner for me and went on a bit too much. Yeah. But that initial reaction was hilarious. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, really? Okay, then. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and then in fairness, you know, different strokes on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. So, in... in, in... You know, again, I, I recognize their positions. Mm. How, you know, they're, they're, how they were known, they were, they were not known, whatever. You know, and that's all well and good. And you know, sympathies to families, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, because you're mourning one and not the other doesn't make you anything good Wrong. or bad. Yeah. Hey. Uh. 
And I was like, it, does, it wouldn't make somebody a bad person if say, one of my relatives died and they couldn't mourn them because they don't know them. They don't know them that well. You know? Also, that whole move along, oh, I don't really feel for either of them, I'll move along, officer. Like, no, don't. Yeah, That's not cool. Hell. Yeah. Because we're it not does wanting... not make you a cop to not... Yeah. Care about you know either one. I mean, yeah, I guess it's sad what happened to DMX, but I mean, I wasn't really into him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's that's I guess that's kind of the whole thing. It sucks, and and it's and you feel sad, but you know, we're not out on the street bawling our eyes out either. Yeah, I mean, from all everything I heard, DMX wasn't exactly an ally anyway. So yeah, so <laughs> yeah, no. So yeah, Ricky yeah. as a fellow Brit. <laughs> Ricky? Have we lost Ricky? Uh, uh oh. Yeah, no, no, I was trying to think how to word it. Uh, okay. I, again, I, wasn't, I, I don't really listen to rap, so I, I, I had no yeah. feeling on DMX. Uh, I come from, I won't say a particularly royalist house. My mum's not a particularly royalist. My dad is a little bit of a royalist. Yeah. Uh, one of my aunties is, uh, she swings both ways. Like, one time she's not particularly fond of royals, next minute she is. So, um,. Yeah, I kind of felt I felt the Prince Philip one a little bit more because, yeah, we are, you, you kind of thought, oh, he's going to make it to a hundred, and then you got that yeah. kick in the gut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that that's for anybody. Anyone who's yes. almost up there, you should get extra power packs. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I, yeah, and yeah, it was just kind of a. Um, I think so. I think for a lot of people as well, it was kind of just another sort of um, bad thing that's happened to the country on just coming off of COVID <laughs> yeah. and then. That it was just like, Ugh. yeah, I think there was a lot of people who just kind of felt it because of that. It was like, ugh, like, yeah, just one more thing to deal with, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just one more thing is, god damn it. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, we have, I guess, we have to talk uh, about all the people complaining to Offset about the BBC's coverage. If you think oh, it was bad uh, now, what do you think is going to happen when Liz pops it? Oh, yeah, no. exactly. Oh, no. Oh no, uh, we won't hear the end uh, of it. For those of you who aren't, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, basically the BBC One and Two had coverage of like news reports and different stuff and, and documentaries and stuff that was just all principle of like, was it 24, 48, 30, 27, 37, 27 hours, 32 hours? But Something like that, yeah. Like almost constant and like, oh, this this program got taken off and that program got taken off and they got record numbers of complaints. I'm assuming for various of various flavors and couple of different points. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like you said, if you think it was bad now, what do you think it's gonna be like when this pops? Oh my oh, god! Because yeah. <laughs> it, it'll, be, it'll be worse. Um, it'll be a lot worse. Yeah. Um, I mean, just think back to when when the Queen Mother popped her clogs. That's probably more close to what we're gonna get when Queen Liz goes than what we got with Prince Philip. <sighs> oh yeah. Boy. So that was about that was that was nearly a week of. Programs. Yeah. Oh no. And I, I, I also remember. They... Sorry, Michelle. I was going to say, did they still have? I was going to say, did they still have regular programming in between though? Because I think that's what the main complaint was. There wasn't regular programming either. I can't remember if there was not. There were definitely a lot of. There was definitely a lot of programs taken off though. I do remember that. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I was going to say was I also remember there's been um, Ofcom getting a complaint from somebody about. <laughs> When they announced the death, which is just like, what do you want them to do? It was it, it, it happened mid news. They complained the announcer who made the de uh, announcement of her death was wearing a black tie when he did it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh off cop, sorry. God. Yeah, I keep saying Ofsted. Ofsted's the school one, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, there was this big, there was this big controversy that the newscaster who announced the Queen Mother's death wasn't wearing a black tie. It's like <laughs> he got handed the piece of paper. <laughs> he's, he's just to read. He doesn't know what's going. He's about to be read out as breaking news. Yeah. Uh, Hi, wow, people. that's that is that's kind of crazy. It is. Uh, uh, oh, speaking of celebrities. One one thing before we get to the stuff that Scully put in the green room, real quick. Um, well, I had another quick thing, oh, but yeah, Carol. Okay, we'll we'll, like, we'll do mine then yours and then his. Okay, so yeah. there have been a couple of celebrity marriages and engagements last week that have made the Twitter rounds, and they're mm -hmm. Aubrey Plaza and I think it was a uh, uh, Cat Dennings. 
who are known icons, basically. Um, the cat was. Yeah, the, yeah. Um, and it's like people people are reacting like, oh no, they both got engaged, and blah, blah, blah. and and they're they're reacting as though somebody killed their dog. Uh, like guys, like guys, y'all wouldn't even have been worthy to smell their farts after Taco Tuesday. You wouldn't get in any of that. You just weren't. And and just because they're engaged and or married doesn't mean they're gonna stop doing any any sexy thing or even start or 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 not even consider doing sexy things. You no, know? they're not. But but point is, they may still. Who knows? They may up and decide. Hey, you know what? We're gonna do a girl 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 on girl posing that for penthouse. I don't know. They're probably not going to. But you know. But marriage and engagement is not going to stop them in and uh-huh. of itself. I mean, hell, there are porn stars who are working, and they work with multiple people who are not their spouse. And they have a happy marriage. So it is possible. Also, yeah. they're also forgetting the fact that either one of them could be polyamorous. So just because they're with somebody, married, engaged, whatever doesn't necessarily mean they would be off the market to most to some people. Not necessarily your perverted ass, but but to other people, they may not be. We don't know. We don't know those details. I don't care about those details. You guys who are all like, oh, but they're getting married. It's like, just be happy for them. That's all you need to do. You still have your fat material that they've already put out. Granted, they don't intend for it to be fat material, but there you go. Uh-huh. They'll make more. You'll You'll... You'll be able to see them and do the things, and and like I said, you're not even going to be worthy enough to smell their farts after Taco Tuesday. So just get over yourself, assholes. I've yeah. done the jealousy thing. Like I was like, I've had the the super jealous. Oh my god, how could they? But I was sixteen, yeah. <laughs> sixteen, seventeen. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So it's just, it's just no. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We've all been there. It's horrible. It sucks. Don't do it. Michelle, what's your other thing? It's kind of a, again, kind of an internet thing. I recently got around to watching um, Lindsay Ellis's uh, Mask Off um, video, mm-hmm. and I actually found it really interesting. I know you, Toby, you did the whole thing about it before. Yeah. Um, guys, have you seen it as well? I have. Um, to... No. Okay. Um... So it is pretty much. Have you listened to over summary the other week? Yes, that's fairly accurate. Uh, one thing I will say is, if you haven't seen um, Avatar and you intend to, maybe watch it first because she kind of does give a light spoiler that if, as an adult, you probably see it coming, but you still don't know definitely where it's going to end up. Uh, so my sort of main thing on it, and I am aware of confirmation bias, and if for those of you who aren't aware, not sure of the expression. Confirmation bias, as I understand it, is basically I believe this thing, this person said the same thing as me, therefore I'm right. Yeah. Ha- However, the thing that Lindsay was basically saying is okay, I said a bad, I, I did a wrong, and I didn't know about all of it. Like, So I said a wrong, and I'm, I'm sorry for that, but here's the thing I, I said it in a moment, and then I woke up and I basically got accused of genocide. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can understand that part. And I basically had the same reaction like in the moment. Like, at our friends, people that go where I know, were on that dog pile. Maybe not directly in the Twitter thread, but they were on that dog pile. And then the yeah. whole bring, dragging up thing from the past. It's like, okay. Some of them have explanations, some of them don't. Like, uh, I know, Gomer, you mentioned the rape rap, and then putting that into context, and then listening to her talk about all that shit. Holy fuck, leave the girl alone! Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, I- I've seen I've seen people, just, like, within our friend group alone, you know, saying things yeah. like, in, at least in terms of, like, the, the big thing that, that, Lindsay, that got Lindsay to make that video, you yeah. know, is the whole idea of, you know, you could have just said something like, oh, my bad, or what have you, or whatever. They were poo-pooing the idea that she made a whole feature-length video, which, uh. which if it was for just that one thing, like I think, like I said last time, if it was for just that one thing, yeah, that would be a bit much. Not all her dirty laundry, because people do that anyway. 
And they do that precisely because she is a woman on the internet. And good or bad, they do treat her worse than than if somebody like me were to do the same exact thing. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I this is... Uh, she, she made a point that I have also made in the past, not to the same degree, but... Uh, so, uh, the main, so for those of you who aren't aware, the main tweet was about she very loosely compared Raya to Avatar: The Last Airbender, and sure, and I didn't know this because I'd avoided. Uh, I tend to avoid um, videos about films I intend to watch, right. but she mentioned that Honest Trailer had basically made the same joke. Um, I haven't seen that Honest Trailer because I still haven't seen Raya. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you're yelling at them. But also, she made the point, which is the thing I've said before, you're criticising my criticism of a film you haven't seen. Don't uh, crit something you haven't seen. Don't crit something based on somebody else's. I get this. I get someone I go and criticise, like, especially the late... The, he still hasn't seen uh, Rise of Skywalker, but he, he craps on it. Now, is it a good movie? Is it the best Star Wars movie? No. Is it a lot of fun? Yes. Have yeah, I seen fun. it and they, therefore can make those opinions? Yes. <laughs> and I I have said before like I've seen trailers and stuff and I've been like ah, that doesn't appeal to me and some, pe- some reviews come in and some people say oh I said she's really good some people say oh it's really bad I will still try and stick with what it is it didn't appeal to me maybe yeah. it is good maybe maybe one day I'll, I'll look at it one day and like oh well it actually was a good film but from what I've seen it did appeal, and there have been times when I've been like, "eh," on something, and someone's review has made me change my mind and made me want to check a film out, and I've either been surprised or confirmed. Yeah, <laughs> and that's but, fine. Yeah. People... Also, to her, sorry, to, to to her point about nobody saw Raya. Yeah, that's because nobody's paying for it. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, if I'm paying 20, 20 quid, twenty dollars for a movie, I'm owning it on Blu-ray. There you go. <laughs> yep. And oh, that 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 takes me on a small tangent because you know how Disney Plus had like you know you have their basic service, and then they put like certain uh-huh. movies behind an additional paywall. Yeah, yeah. Or you have things that are stuck in Netflix jail. That sort of uh-huh. thing there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's a it's something when piracy is coming back up again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like it, it's so much better than what it was before. You know, in terms of piracy, like like there is a site out there that I can go to. I can get most any movie that I want within the past hundred something years. This they're, they're missing some, and the same with TV shows. They're missing some, but that's okay because the point the point of things being online and the point of streaming is to make it easier for everybody to access. For a low or no price. Preferably no price. Pay for it with your advertisers. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what you should do. Especially if you're a company like Disney. Or ABC. You know. Have it up there streaming for free. In fact, hell. ABC. Have their own streaming thing for free. And I was able to catch up with. Keep up with General Hospital back in the day because of it. Now. Mm. If I want to keep up with it in a legal sense. I have to pay for Hulu. Which I may not want to pay for. See, we're kind of lucky in that sense that we seem to get a lot of Hulu and um, HBO stuff just goes to our Netflix. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah. the would... other, and that and that comes to another problem too because we have Netflix, we have Hulu, we have Plus, we have Crunchyroll, we have Verve, we have all of these different services that have only certain shows, but yet, you know, you know, we can't have them all under one roof for whatever reason. That's why certain piracy sites exist because on the one that I've been using, I can get the Disney Plus show. I can get stuff that's on the like the CBS All Access. I can get stuff that's on Netflix, etc. All in one place, and you can watch it for free, or you can pay for like the little VIP thing that gives you a few extra perks, and it helps support the site. That's how it should be. Everything under and one roof. Old. Sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. I say, at the risk of being old, um, isn't that just network television? Like, a, a program will be on a channel. 
and if you want to watch that program, you have to watch that channel. <laughs> yeah. What, what you mean with like the the individual Netflix, Disney Plus, etc.? Yeah. Yeah. But, but at the same time, for the most part, um, they were free or part of your bigger package. Like I think I've got like a hundred channels on Virgin. I I can't remember the last time I turned on my V box that wasn't Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and yeah, you're basically right there. It's cable, you get one package for definitely considerably less than you could pay for all these streaming services. Yeah. And not everybody's going to have a TV and have the money to get your cable boxes, whether it's a Roku box or whatever. You know, maybe we just want to stream it on our tablets or on our phones. Or maybe we just want to binge on the computer. You know, we should be allowed to do that without having to pay out the ass for it. Yeah. I mean, I'm willing to pay. I'm willing to pay to have things to own, to keep, or to just have access to, as long as the access encompasses more than just whatever stable Disney has or whatever stable CBS has or whatever's on Hulu, which in the case of Disney is kind of redundant because they also own a Hulu. But still, it should be uh, in one place. Slightly back to my point, well, mine and Lindsay's point about criticizing something you haven't seen. Um, one of our friends, um, I think more my friend than yours, um, has basically, because I'd said the same thing, it's like, really, people, I, and this is before I'd watched Mask Off, people kind of dogpiling and saying this, and like, is it kind of reactionary? And then they turn around and say, well, apparently she is this and this and that. I'm like, having now watched the video, I don't think my friend has watched it, because the stuff they're saying is covered. Yeah. It, she talks about, and I'm like, you're commenting on something, I don't think you've watched it yet. You you don't have all the context. Yeah. It's... And and I'm I'm guilty of doing something like that sometimes as well, and I'm trying to get better. Yeah, people are gonna do that. You need to not. <laughs> I work on it just as much as the next person. Uh, so with all that said, uh, now now we now we'll get to uh, what Scully had put in there, in in our in our little green room. That uh, all right. All right. So uh, it's something a bit more funny, lighthearted, you know, than what we've been talking about. So, uh, <laughs> you know, okay. So, uh, all right, this guy Cliff Jarrison uh, <laughs> says uh, something like, "All right, he made a tweet that said it's fucked up how fish sticks don't specify specify species or even like order. Would you eat poultry nuggets or tetrapod burger?" Hoof sticks, hoof stock stew. With every other animal except for the noble hot dog, we have higher taxonomic, taxonom, taxonomic standards than that. Damn. Yeah, okay. I, I saw this one earlier. I didn't realize that it gotten, gotten, uh, where it, thing is just wow. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um. Then uh, someone named Charlie Moss Mass. I don't know. Uh, response: It's not too late to delete your tweet. Like, wow! <laughs> wow! Like, <laughs> what the? F That's I mean, just. I'm pretty sure he was just joking, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then uh, okay, here's the kicker. Um, a couple hours later, he uh, he uh, posts this huge ass formal apology, uh, and I'm going to read it. All right. On May 12th, 2021, under the influence of a shot of Bacari mixed with Langer's pineapple orange coconut juice cocktail, I understand this does not excuse my actions, I posted misinformation about the ingredients of fish sticks. There is no way to undo the harm I have caused. I apologize unreservedly to the fish stick community, the fishing community, the fish community, and to my fans. You deserve better, and I let you down. I am striving to do better, and I am still in the process of learning and growing. I have made a small $3.95 uh, minus club card benefits donation to my local fish stick vendor, and I hope that will help us begin the healing process. What? Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm, I'm just... <laughs> I'm I'm just looking down some of the rest of the thread and just like yeah I, I think one of you mentioned that 
certain places that Fred and I are projecting onto. But it's like apparently in the EU they put the species on their and I wanna feel like they do on here too, but but just the way the way this this just went is just okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean Didn't need to go that hard, Cliff. <laughs> yeah, still pretty hilarious. Uh yeah. I don't I don't really eat fish sticks. I'd rather just, you know, grill grill a fucking salmon or something. <laughs> but yeah. you know. Uh similar here I Sandwiches not... I like. Yeah. I'm not much of a seafood person myself. Most all the most I'll eat voluntarily is canned tuna and that's with plenty of mayo. Somewhere Becky is stuttering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just that that was the thing, it's like uh, so hard, Cliff. Uh but yeah. Alrighty. I I guess I guess the I guess we have to watch out for the fish mafia now, huh? Yeah. I mean you say that, but have you don't seen what's happening in the channel? Uh Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so Ricky, take this one. <laughs> Yeah, we had uh, me, me and Michelle were talking about Pokemon Snap, and I was because I was saying I was thinking about getting the Switch to play it, and she decided to show her picture she recently took on the on the game. No, yeah. I meant what's happening with Jersey and France. Oh, I haven't heard that one. Oh, I haven't heard you that one. Have... No, no. Uh, basically, France now? tried to. Uh, basically, France tried to um, invade. Um, Basically, oh well, we want your fishing rights, so we're gonna just invade, and they they sent out the navy and oh, everything. Yes, I did hear, but I heard some about that. Yeah, Boris, they, the French basically said, well, Jersey is technically in our uh, area of the English Channel, which to a certain extent, yes, it is, but it's also yes. British ter but it's also British territory. So Boris's reaction to this was to dispatch the fleet. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here, here's the thought I had. We sailed halfway across the country, halfway across the planet, to defend an island that is nowhere near us. What do you think we're going to do to a, a country that's on our doorstep? Like, how we, how, if we've got an island on our doorstep um, and we went around the world, you think we ain't going to defend that shit either? Yeah, exactly. Uh... For, those of you, for those of you who are not aware, I'm talking about Argentina, uh, the uh, Falklands yeah. War. Wow. Apparently, so yes, Fish Mafia is actually a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? You will, you will, I would think we have a title as well. <laughs> you will pay us. You will pay us some money for the fish, or else uh, we'll be sleeping with them. Worst accent I know, but I don't care. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I just had I just had a really bad thought. Um, uh -oh. Michelle might get this. Instead of the mafia, wouldn't it be called? Uh, because over here we, they used to call it the firm of the Cray twins, who are version of the mafia. Would that be called? Yeah. Would this be called the Fins? Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So yeah. Oh. And oh, an update while we were recording the. CDC has said, uh, the Centers for Disease Control over here in America, says if you are uh -huh. fully vaccinated against COVID-19, you can resume activities without wearing a mask or staying six feet apart, except where required by federal, state, local, tribal, or territorial laws, including local business and workplace guidance. Which means, yes, we can go around without our masks if we are fully vaccinated over here, but if a, if a business says you need to mask up, mask the fuck up. Yep. Yeah. Did you see the thing? I don't know if it was a joke or not. It was uh, someone posted it on Twitter. It was from Vice. I don't know if it was a genuine Vice thing. I don't know what Vice's politics are. Uh, I don't know if it was a shop job. But it was essentially in the lines of anti-mask, anti-vaxxers are wearing masks to protect themselves from the vaxxed. Yeah, this is what the fuck? <laughs> oh, like, whatever is... works. Whatever what... works. Yeah... <laughs> Like, yeah, they apparently think we're shedding. <laughs> no, we're not shedding. Shedding skin, maybe. <laughs> shedding hair. 
But we apparently, didn't someone's COVID. put out. A, a, yeah, apparently, someone's put out some kind of weird idea that apparently we're shedding some kind of toxin now. Uh, if it gets into the fucking masks, then okay, let them have it. Yeah, mask. exactly. Just let them do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, somebody else on Twitter asks: Does the CDC have any advice about pants? <laughs> I mean, I think they're overrated for the most part, except when it's really cold. So, but Has then again, stop fake uh, pockets. Don't... Yeah, pockets are good. They they need to have more pockets, and and actual pockets. Yes. Uh, but yeah, but and then again, I say pants are overrated as I sit here in Florida, <laughs> where it gets boiling hot. Oh. Uh. That's so pretty. So I've just found I've just found Autumn Sawbuck. Cool. Ah, uh, yes. I, I've been considering getting the new Pokemon Snap, but honestly, I if I'm going to play a game like that, I would rather be able to control when I stop, where I go, and I want it to be all on a track, or at least have a mode like that. Now, if they put in a mode like that where it's just like free range, you take pictures however you want, then fine. That sort of thing. It yeah, is on rail, which yeah. is kind of frustrating, but at the same time, with all the different things they give you the, for the camera, it's like, and then add walking on top of that. Yeah, that could get a bit, a bit tricky with if you know, you need yeah. extra buttons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Uh, sure. <laughs> it's, 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 it, it, it's Nintendo Game Freak. I think Nam guy, Nam, uh, Bandai Namco worked on it too and developed and all that shit. I think it works on. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so with that, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and get out of here for this time. Um, hopefully it won't be so long between shows this next time. Um, <laughs> that I, I, I take the blame on that one. Uh, but then again, I also hear to, it. <laughs> yeah, but I also had to get my COVID shot too, so, so that's, yeah. that's at least part of it. But uh, yeah, so, um, so Ricky, uh, if we wanted to find you on the internet, where could we find you? Uh, as you can find me on fanfiction.net at... Uh, my account there because I do not have a Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> so that's about the only place you can find me. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, that link should probably still be in the doobly doo, maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, Michelle, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me. I have a link tree, um, link tr.ee slash phoenix11 phenix11. And I actually realized the other day that I've technically created on five different YouTube channels. Huh. <laughs> but obviously, okay. Linktree only lets you add one. So obviously, yeah. my own, which is in the Linktree. Uh, this one, um, I've featured on Aaron's a few times, uh, both as a guest and on his streams. Obviously, I'm on Zenith's one. And I've appeared on uh, Philip's, uh, can I, I always forget how to say his name, but uh, Zen's editor. I've, I've, I'm on his channel as well now. So you can go all over the place nowadays. <laughs> there you go. And link for only one YouTube channel? That's weird. I've got my main one and the... I've got all three of mine on my link tree. So we'll check. Weird. Maybe they've updated it. Huh. Weird. But, um... Speak it... Oh, wow. Uh, Scully, uh, where can we find you? You can find me, uh... uh on link tree, link tr.ee slash Scully Pendra. Eat. And as for me, I also have a link tree, link tr.ee number 21 X. You can find all the links to all of my YouTube stuff, TikTok, social medias, and even an OnlyFans. And, um, and, and unlike Brent Black, if you click on it, it will actually go to OnlyFans. If you click on his, you get a. If you click, click, click on Brent Black's OnlyFans link in his link tree, you'll get a nice surprise. As, as I got to roll Becky with. I'm not going to tell you what the surprise is, but you'll just have to go and find out. <laughs> I don't uh, uh. <laughs> so, yeah but uh but yeah so uh all that all that good stuff and and again if 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 you like what you hear and you like what i do because i do more than just this I'm, i've been doing been a little bit more active on tiktok lately and uh if you like what i do and you want to help support there's always the patreon yes i am saying that separately because yeah it's that important um and i would like for it to grow whenever possible. I mean, it got to grow this last time. Thank you, Kitty. Again, thank you, Kitty, for being a patron. And and I hope I, I hope I live up to your standards. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, but, also, as a quick final, uh, don't forget if you're in the in the United States, text get vax four three eight eight two nine. It should text you back with three places you can get um, shots that day. Yes. Um, oh so yeah, get your ass vaccinated. I don't care where you are. Get it vaccinated as soon as you can. Um, yep. The mask up or vax up. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, for us, for us vaccinated folks, fully vaccinated folks, I, I think the whole thing is supposed to take effect like two weeks after your second shot, if if you have to get a two shotter. So yeah. So for me, by eh, actually by next Thursday, I think yeah, next Thursday I should be good to just walk around like I normally would. Most places still got to carry mask because, you know, like we said, businesses. But um. Yep. But yeah. So yeah, okay, so yeah, vax up, mask up, and until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Michelle, Skola, Pendra, and Ricky, signing off. See ya. Bye. Bye.